Ladies and gentlemen, the CPAC revolution, taking back our parties. Please welcome, from the United Kingdom, the Right Honorable Liz Truss. Well, thank you so much. And it's fantastic to be here at CPAC with so many true conservatives. And boy, are you needed now. Because the reality is that the West has been run by the left for too long. And we've seen that it's been a complete disaster. On the streets of our big cities, we have people protesting in favor of terrorism, carrying placards and waving flags that are anti-Semitic, even after the appalling atrocities on October the 7th in Israel. We have our borders out of control, with illegal immigrants able to enter our countries freely. We have a growing tax burden and a growing size of government, as well as some of the most powerful bureaucratic states that we've ever seen. And our energy bills are going up because of the Green New Deal or Net Zero, even though China is building coal-fired power stations at a record rate. But what I want to talk most of all about today is the fact that the very basis of Western civilization is being undermined. The values, the Anglo-American values that we hold dear, that were encapsulated in Magna Carta, in the Bill of Rights, in the American Constitution. They're being questioned and undermined. Our history is being challenged. Even our biology is being challenged. Can you imagine... Could you have imagined 10 years ago that we'd be talking about what a woman is and what a man is and having a serious argument about it? It's incredible. And yet, every issue, the left win, they push it even more. They push it to even more extremes. And meanwhile, we've seen President Biden asleep at the wheel in the White House. Now, in Britain, we are one of the few countries that still have a conservative government. But the left did not accept that they'd lost at the ballot box. Instead, they've been weaponizing our court system to stop us deporting illegal immigrants. They've been using the administrative state to make sure that conservative policies are thwarted. And they've been pushing their woke agenda through our schools, through our campuses, and even in our corporations. Now, I thought that companies in the free market were meant to be about giving people jobs, giving people opportunities, making money, making profits, creating wealth for our country. But no, we've got a new kind of economics now in the West. It's called wokeonomics. It's actually about DEI and ESG and all those other three-letter acronyms that mean less opportunities for people and less future for our nation. That's what we are facing now, even in countries with conservative governments, because of the power of the left and the power of those bureaucracies. And the left are aided and abetted by our enemies overseas. Now that includes Russia, it includes Iran, and most of all it includes China, which stands behind all of them. And what those people want to see is they don't want to just compete with countries in the West. They don't want economic competition. They want to undermine our very way of life. They want to undermine our societies. And what they want to do is they want our societies to collapse from within because we loathe ourselves, because we hate ourselves. That's what they are trying to achieve. And what's happened is these regimes have actually been enabled by us 
over the past few decades. You know, we let China into the World Trade Organization, and we've allowed them to undermine free markets with their unfair practices. We've almost allowed Iran to develop a nuclear weapon. And we've enabled Vladimir Putin by not taking action early enough when he could be stopped. That is what has been going on. Instead of projecting strength, and we know that dictators only respond to strength, we projected weakness. And that is what is being projected from the White House at the moment. And I'm afraid there are too many conservatives who have gone along with some of these left-wing ideas. Now, in Britain, we call them chinos, conservatives in name only. I think in America, you call them rhinos, uh, Republicans in name only. But it's the same tendency. It's people who think, I want to be popular. I don't want to upset people. I don't want to look like a mean person. I want to attend nice dinner parties in London or Washington, D.C. I want my friends to like me. I don't want to cause trouble. But what those people are doing is they are compromising and they are triangulating and they are losing the argument. And I've got a message for them. You can't triangulate with terrorists. You can't compromise with communists. You have to fight for what you believe in. You have to fight for the conservative values. You have to fight for the conservative values that you hold dear. And I am prepared to do that. I will fight, even if it's not popular, even if people say they don't like it because I know it's right. Individual liberty, families and people making decisions, not the government, freedom and free enterprise and capitalism. And most of all, the fact that our countries, the United Kingdom and the United States, are exceptional. We are great nations. And I refuse to have our history talked down. And I refuse to have our values talked down. We need to stand up for those values. And we need to stand up for them every day. And I'm afraid, my friends, we are in difficult times. And I very much fear that unless conservatives become more active in speaking out, unless we are prepared to fight this battle, even if it's difficult, even if it's uncomfortable, that Western civilization is doomed. Now, I've written a book, which is coming out very soon, and you can pre-order it, but I've written a book, and it's called 10 Years to Save the West. And I've written it based on my experiences as a minister in the UK government and ultimately as Prime Minister. And it's a warning. It's a warning to you in the United States, and it's a warning to all of us across the free world. Because I went into government and put myself forward to be leader of the Conservative Party and Prime Minister because I believed our country needed to be turned around. I saw our growth wasn't high enough, that we hadn't sorted out immigration. I wanted to deal with those issues. And I put forward a range of policies, and those policies got support. They got support from our party members, from our base. And the policies were cutting taxes, cutting the size of government, and reining in the administrative state. Making sure our borders were secure, and we were deporting illegal immigrants. Making sure, making sure that people could start a family by building more houses and having cheaper energy. I wanted us to get fracking in the United Kingdom. You know, you know that fracking has lowered energy bills here and it's made America less dependent 
on foreign powers. And that's what I wanted to do in the UK. And what I also wanted to do was get rid of all the EU laws off our statute books. Now, you, you may think that we voted for Brexit back in 2016. And I'm sure you're going to be surprised to hear that the vast majority of those EU laws are still on our statute books. It's a bit like getting divorced and still living in the same house as your ex-husband. Now, I don't believe that EU regulations were going to drive the British economy, so I wanted to get rid of them. So these are the policies that I put forward. And I believe if all of those policies had been implemented, Britain would be stronger and we'd be in a better position now. And I'm not saying I'm a perfect person or I did everything exactly right, but I faced the most almighty backlash for those conservative policies that I tried to put in place. It, from the usual suspects in the media, from the usual suspects in the corporate world, but also from people that were meant to work for the government. The Office of Budget Responsibility, the Bank of England, these organizations sought to undermine the policies. Even the IMF intervened, and even President Biden intervened to have a go at my policies. Now, can you imagine being attacked on your economic policies by the inventor of Bidenomics? <laughs> Talk about offensive. But the reality is, with that level of antagonism, I simply was not able to implement those policies, which I believe, and Conservative Party members believe, would have delivered for our country. And frankly, I didn't have enough support from Conservative MPs as well in order to be able to do that. So this is the lesson that I have learnt. I've learnt that it's not enough just to have the right policies. It's not even enough to get the position of power that you need to deliver those policies. Because Conservatives are now operating in what is a hostile environment. And we essentially need a bigger bazooka in order to be able to deliver. And I think we have got to challenge the institutions themselves. We've got to challenge the system itself. And we've got to be prepared to take that on as conservatives. I think we need to draw inspiration from popular democracy movements. The founding fathers, the Chartists, those people who wanted to make sure the will of the people was delivered in their country. And we have to understand just how deep the vested interests of the establishment are, how hard they will fight and how unfairly they will fight in order to get their way. And that is what I learned from my time as a government minister and my time in number 10. So let me tell you, about the US situation. Of course, we need a Republican back in the White House. We need it desperately. And by the way, it's not just America that needs it desperately. We need it desperately right across the free world because you are the leaders of the free world, like it or not. And of course, we need Republicans in the Senate and we need Republicans in the House of Representatives. But we need Republicans who are prepared to fight. We need Republicans who aren't going to cave in to the establishment. We need Republicans who are prepared to take on this difficult task, even if it's unpopular, even if they're criticized, even if they don't get invited to any dinner parties. That is what we need. Because that is the way that we will ensure that Republicans are in power as well as being in office. And it's ultimately conservatives being in power that is what is going to save the West. We will not save the West without that.
So, my friends, it's fantastic to be here and get the injection, the fresh injection of conservative energy. We need it. We need it very much in Europe. We need it very much in the United Kingdom. And let me tell you, we have 10 years to save the West. Let's get to it now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.